Yes, it's true. I was deactivated from Point Pickup. I can't log into the app at all. When I try to log into the app, it says that my account was blocked, but that means I was deactivated. So I can't log in, I can't view my profile, I can't view my past trips, current orders, any of that. It was one of my favorite delivery driving apps until now. Let's go into the app to figure out what Point Pickup says about my account and the reason why I was deactivated. And then after that, I'm gonna talk about the real reason why I think I was deactivated because Point Pickup doesn't make it very clear. So on this very first screen, I'm just just trying to log in when I'm driving for a point pickup sometimes I don't have to log in if I've been completing a lot of deliveries I usually don't have to enter my email and my password it's usually just automatically logged in I don't have to worry about it at all but when I got to this screen I thought something was a little bit funny because it's gonna make me put in my email and my password so I go do that everything is looking fine and I for whatever reason am blocked. My account is blocked. This is very, very strange. Never seen this message before. I'm thinking what could possibly be the reason why my account is blocked or is this possibly a deactivation? It looks like it is. This happened like two weeks ago. I was like, whatever. I don't make that much on point pickup anyway. I'm mostly just DoorDash and Uber Eats. And so I'm like, I'm just going to continue with those apps. Like, I guess it's not really a big deal. Maybe the issue will resolve itself. And so I was like, no, uh, just push it off to the side. About a week after I tried to sign in and found out my account was blocked, I got an email from Point Pickup with an update on the status of my account. The email states that I may have noticed that my account was blocked, which I did notice that. And then they said, if I think this was a mistake, I should reach out to Point Pickup support. Okay, yeah, I mean, I definitely do think this is a mistake. In the email, they basically tell me all of the things that I already knew. They said, if you're having trouble logging in, click on the I'm having trouble logging in button. Okay, yeah, I mean, sounds good to me. The email also shows that there is a contact us form that we're gonna fill out later in the video. At the bottom of the email, there is a help center button that I can click on. So we're gonna click on that right now and we're gonna jump into why my account was blocked. After searching for the proper article, I found it and let's get into the reasons why Point Pickup thinks that I could have been blocked. The number one thing here that they mention is the accumulation of strikes against my account. Well, I didn't even know Point Pickup had strikes. If I got a strike, hopefully I would have been made aware of this either by Point Pickup, through the driver app, anything, or an email. I did not receive anything. There's no notifications that I have ever received a strike against me. I'm assuming like on DoorDash, I know that if you get like three strikes, then you could possibly be deactivated. So Point Pickup might have a similar thing to DoorDash where three strikes and you're getting deactivated. To my knowledge, I have zero strikes on my account. They also say negative feedback might be one of the reasons why my account was blocked. But again, I've never heard from a customer negative feedback. I've never heard from the driver app. I've never heard in an email negative feedback. I try to do my best with a lot of these point pickup orders because not only do they pay pretty well, but also point pickup most of the time delivers groceries from stores and these are people that ordinarily would not be able to grocery shop for themselves. A lot of elderly people use this service. They either order through that grocery store's website, or I think they might be able to use point pickups system. And so like these are a lot of these people cannot actually do the grocery shopping themselves. So I'm like extremely nice, take good care of the orders, maybe better care than some of my DoorDash and Uber Eats orders. So negative feedback, I think I'm good on that one too. And now here we get into a list of ways that can help me be a better driver on the road. So the first one is to keep a clean car and smoke free. Well, I've never smoked in my life, so I think we're good. And my clean car, okay, that could use a little bit of work. I mean, it's a really old car, like 17, 18 years old, but I mean, I can't help it. There's just certain stains that were there before I got the car. Um, the car's in pretty good condition for how old it is. I don't think that's a problem at all. Number two, never carry orders with another passenger. 
I do have my wife in my car occasionally, but very, very rarely. I mean, like at most, I've probably done one or two point pickup orders with my wife in the car. That's before I even knew that this existed. So I'm sorry about that, but I really don't think anybody complained. Like. The, who would even know that that is happening except for the customer but usually they're like a lot of these are like apartment complex orders and so usually my wife will just like wait in the car and then you know, I go drop them off and the customer never sees her. So I don't think that's an issue. Number three, show up on time for pickup and drop offs. I have never been late to a drop off to my knowledge. I immediately go from the grocery store to the customer. Occasionally there are some times where orders are extremely late. In the case that they're extremely late, point pickup may even call me personally to my phone and say, hey, we have an order, it's extremely late, can you take this offer? We're going to give you a little bit of bump in pay to take it. And you know, I know that the customer's probably upset that the order is already late because they get a four hour scheduled window of when their groceries are going to arrive. And sometimes this is like after that, maybe an hour or two after that four hour window. And I'm sure the customers are upset and like, even times when I know that it's late and it's definitely not my fault, I will still apologize to the customer and be like, oh, I'm so sorry, like I know that it's late. Probably 80 to 90% of the time, the customers are just like, oh, it's okay, it's not your fault. I know it's like the grocery store's fault. It's not you at all. And I'm like, okay, I uh, yeah, thank you for that. Like now you actually understand like that I'm just a driver, like I have nothing to do with the Safeway or the Albertsons that I'm delivering from. As far as the pickups, once or twice I have heard from employees at the grocery stores and they're like, hey, I thought you were gonna come significantly earlier than you did, but Point pickup gives you a window so you don't have to go to the grocery store immediately after accepting an order. Like if the window is from like one to 5 p.m., then I would be like, well, okay, I'll just like go whenever it, it's not that busy on DoorDash and Uber Eats. So I accept the order at like noon and I'm like, I'm just gonna work out this lunch shift until like two or three and then I'm gonna go to that grocery store. Well, sometimes the employees of that Safeway or Albertsons that I'm going to, it's like, oh, the app showed that you were like already here and so we like got the groceries ready but then like you didn't show up and I'm like, well, that's definitely not my fault. That has to be like point pickups fault because like, if I can deliver those groceries at 5 p.m. and I get them delivered at like 3.30 or 4, then I don't think that's my fault at all. The next one, be polite and helpful with customers. I think I've already explained that. Like I try to do my best. I'm like provide better customer service with some of these orders than I do with DoorDash and Uber Eats orders. It just works out that way because the people are more appreciative to get their items. So then I'm just like naturally in like a happier mood. Then I scroll down and it says, if you still think this was a mistake, you can reach out to the email accounts at pointpickup.com. And so that is exactly what I did. I reached out to them and I was like, hey, I think this was a mistake. Like I'm pretty sure I did everything correctly and we have not received a response yet. I sent that email on December 15th. I'm posting this on December 30th and I'm filming it the day before I post it. So I really, really would like a response from them, but unfortunately it does not look like we are going to get it. So we are going to have to fill out that form that was in the email. And so here it is right now. The form just makes you fill out your basic details like email and phone number. And then it lets you explain the reason why you are trying to get your account back. So I put in all of that information and then I gave just a brief description of my issue saying my account was blocked and I would really like it back because I don't think that I have any infractions against me. Like I think it would be pretty foolish for them to deactivate me for like anything that I did on the road because like I really don't think I did anything and we sent it off. So we will see if they respond to us. I really hope that it doesn't just go to the same email that I already tried to reach out to because who knows if I'll ever get a response if that's the case. I really don't use point pickup that often on the road. My earnings are highly skewed towards DoorDash and Uber Eats just because those two are the best apps in my market, but point pickup is probably my third favorite app in front of Grubhub and Instacart and Shipt and Roadie, but 
Oh, I guess now it's not my third favorite. And wow, I'm just like really, really disappointed because I really don't think any of those reasons are the reason why I've been deactivated. Now, I do think that the reason I was deactivated was because I don't use it that often, which is very, very strange to me. I've heard of other apps deactivating people for inactivity in the past. And yes, I have not taken an order from them in at least a month and a half, maybe two months, but that just seems like a very strange reason to deactivate somebody, especially when I constantly get emails from them about how they're expanding to new stores in my area. And so like, I think that they would want drivers and not try to kick them off the platform. I think this even more so because on this channel, although I haven't made too many point pickup videos, I have been promoting them. I'm like, this is a great app. I'm so happy to be driving for them. Like I'm sure that people have signed up for the point pickup app and started driving because of one of my videos. And so, Again, I'm sure they don't know about my YouTube channel, but if they have seen my channel, they should have looked at it as good publicity because uh, they're probably getting new drivers because of me. These delivery apps just have no incentive to be loyal to you because they can always get brand new drivers all the time. So, I mean, yes, it's sad for me to be deactivated, but I know this going in as an independent contractor. There is no reason for them to keep me around if they don't value me as a driver and think of me as being useful to them. That's just the reality that we're living in as delivery drivers and we just have to accept it. And that's why I sign up for as many apps as I possibly can so that I don't have to uh, worry about it. Okay, my third favorite app isn't gonna let me on the platform anymore. Oh well, we just uh, move on. I'm glad I have my top two apps and hopefully one of those never deactivate me. <laughs>